Welcome back to the dumbest modeling channel on all of YouTube. Your host Ian here on Pit Stain Hobbies. Um, so when we last left you, uh, the bogies were not built. The bogies are now built, but uh, only one with wheels so far. And uh, I wanted them to spin a lot smoother, like nice and easy to spin. Okay, they were a little tight. Toit, let you too toit. So if you if you shove one of these pins through here, it's extremely tight and it's hard to turn you can turn it right off the sprue you can turn it but I think if you were trying to like just roll the tank with the tracks because these don't have rubber tires they're not gonna grip onto the tracks and really be forced to roll I think a lot of them would just skid and scrape paint um, or scrape clear coat or scrape weathering or whatever uh, so the trick to get these to roll smoothly that I have found with the least physical effort and dexterity required is you grab yourself a power drill all right i have my brand new uh makita here my wife got me for valentine's day this year it's, it's quite a nice drill all right now it is variable speed can you please focus right here come on okay i'm zoomed in too far there we go there we go okay perfect so she'll, she'll get up and shoot pretty quickly. You want to lock this thing in 80% uh, of the way up the shaft that goes in the wheel. And you you really can't tighten this thing down until it clicks because you'll just crush the plastic. But that's enough. Then what you do is take a glass nanofile of your choice. Here is a... Uh, uh, this is just a cheap, junky one from Amazon for doing nails. And then we have a fancy gun primer racer. Um, you could get the same results with either one, but the darker the, the, the uh, nanofile, the better. And, uh, sorry about the noise. Now, I already know how far I need to go, but you'll see the white, you'll see the plastic residue. Okay, now we saw this was hard to fit in the hole before and it would not spin easily. And now... Oh, not enough, see? Not enough. So what we want to do, it spins easier, but not easy enough. What we want to do, you might want to flip it over and put it in the other side. Because your nanofile will get schmutzed up with plastic residue. So what you want to do is give it a vigorous scrubbing with a uh, toothbrush, preferably one of the free ones from your dentist's office and not your wife's toothbrush from her bathroom. I've learned that lesson the hard way multiple times. You want to apply moderate pressure with the nanofile. Try to keep it even. You'll see if it's even. Like if you have a pattern like that, obviously you're only getting one side. If you have a pattern like that, you're good. So just Keep an eye on the file. Okay, so now our file is all full of plastic and that is low resistance spinning. The other thing is these files have a fairly fine grit equivalent to them and you can see how this part is shiny it's polished it's sanded down but it's also polished so when you put that sucker in there now pinching the wheels together is going to cause a little resistance just from the faces of here but it is going to they are going to roll so much smoother so a little bit of sanding and this was the easiest way i could find to sand was to use use the big boy drill uh the chuck on my tamiya handy drill was too small it was very slow RPM on that. It would have probably taken a long time. And after you do one and you have it perfect, put it in the smooth pile and don't forget to uh, toothbrush all the residue out of your glass nanofile. Now this gun primer racer could be like 20, 30 bucks or whatever on a hobby website, but these little glass nanofiles on uh, uh, DR mode DR, DR mode is this whatever the hell brand it is. I, I took this from my wife. 
because I showed her my gun primer um, and my display. Uh, my display is over at my at my desk at work. Um, but yeah, when I showed her these, she was like, "What's a glass nanofile?" She's been doing her manicures and pedicure stuff for decades now, and uh, she had no idea about these. But they're fantastic little things, and they're super cheap. Just search glass nanofile on uh, on Amazon, and you'll get them. So I got five more here to do. Don't want to bore you with that. We got a crap ton of road wheels to build, and then we're going to build our track links. Um, this video is going to be uploaded after um, our live stream tonight at 9 p.m., uh, but you will see a live stream on my channel from time to time. And when you see that, I am with the Hobby Time Modelers in a group live stream build session. And I will be working on this tank during the live stream tonight and for the weeks to come until this tank is finished. So just so you're aware, I will be there live streaming with the Hobby Time Modelers. You can go back and watch the old live streams and I'll be doing some work and some BSing. A uh, combination of the two, not quite a 50-50 ratio at all times, depending on how many of these have entered my body. Mm. But tonight being the day after Thanksgiving, I'm taking it easy, Miller Lite only, uh, trying to watch our potty mouth. Got ourselves in a little trouble in a live stream a couple weeks ago. Don't even post that on our page, because I was, oh man, I was like a drunk sailor and a truck driver. We're just hanging out together, seeing who could be more offensive. Uh, but there we go. Um, okay, we'll be right back, and uh, we'll have hopefully a whole a whole bunch of built track links, or most of the built track links, all the road wheels, bogeys done, um, and we'll be moving along nice and swiftly because no one wants to watch me build track links. Or son of a, don't, no, ah, oh, she always calls when I'm recording. I'll be right back. Hey, we're back. Look at this progress. <coughs> Pardon me. Sorry about the space heater noise. It is chilly in the basement. Um, ah, oh, that front, that, the, the front, the, this looks so much better than the Tamiya, um, 16 scale Sherman, uh, any of their mod, their, their tank, their, their RC tank, so it does have that aluminum chassis, but this looks, this looks very nice, I'm very happy with it, cast texture, go, go to town if you want to make it look extra, extra beat ups and, uh, weathered and all that, you know, the sky's the limit of what you can do weathering wise, but this is a very nice thing, very nice thing. Yes, and these tracks, look at that, look at that, they move so smoothly, they're very nice, they look very good, and I want to kill myself. Um, the, everything fits perfectly, they're just tedious, um, and you know, you gotta be careful with the glue, and you know, keep working them while you're gluing them to make sure that they're, you know, doing the thing right. Now the other thing is, uh, I, I think Andy's mentioned this in a video or two probably already. Other people on the build groups and, and Facebook and everywhere, they mentioned this, okay? You are not using extra thin to glue this stuff together. This is ABS plastic. Uh, Mr. Cement SP, I have the black version just for contrast so you can see it. Um, this almost kind of works, but yes, but it's it's a little hotter than Tamiya. But really what you need is a ABS plastic weld glue. I just happen to be able to get Plastruck to brand at my local uh, Hobby Town USA for a five seventy five a bottle. And uh, mine is damn near nearly empty at this point. So I went on an emergency glue run over the weekend and uh, I bought two more bottles of uh, Plastruck Plastic Weld. Uh, <laughs> you're not gonna need this much glue, but I would start with, uh, I'd say, at least a half a bottle of this to confidently make it through this entire build. Also, uh, the uh, Hobby Hobby Lo Hobby Town, not Hobby Lobby. Let me not insult them by calling them Hobby Lobby. They, I was like, oh, where's the extra thin? They're like, ah, oh, we're out. I said, no, you're not. Um, so yes, yes, it is. It is an urban legend, but it is true if you look at the. Uh, the MSDS, the Material Safety Data Sheet, I think. Correct me in the comments, but hit that like button first and subscribe, but then comment and correct me on how stupid I am. Uh, but yeah, uh, this stuff is 99 point something percent exactly the same as Extra Thin, and for 950, you get a giant 250 milliliter jug of it versus the price of Extra Thin, which is a lot for like, I don't know, 40 milliliters. A little 3D printed base. I haven't spilled any extra thin 
since I've printed that base. I also haven't spilled any plastic weld since I printed this base. Uh, they're on like Thingiverse. If you have a, you know, a halfway even crappy FDM printer like my Ender 3 Pro uh, that I got for 99 bucks at Micro Center, which still, that video gets so many views. It's such a crappy video. Um, 77 track lengths per side. I am going to be right back and I'm going to detail putting a link together um, how to. Uh, it, it's it's going to be very, very basic, but I'm going to go over just where to put the glue and how to put the track horn on, which is also super simple. But really the trick is just, just use the right glue. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so here's where things get a little just tedious, okay? Um, is obviously each track is going to use three of these ginormous runners. I'm zoomed in right now so you can kind of see what we're doing here. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna zoom in a little more. We're gonna full zoom. Look at that. Okay, we're in there. So uh this track not much cleanup is really required here. Uh as long as you nip it off with like a, a high quality pair of nippers. So we've got the Dispay, uh, I don't know, 2.0, 3.0, whatever nippers they are. And we also got the God Hand uh, SPN 120s. If, if you have a good, good, really good set of nippers, it makes this easier. Now, these, um, uh, these tracks are, they're, they're reverse pinned. Hidden, oh God, I had, you know when I do Gundam videos, I somehow remember the name of this molding style. But they mold it from the back of the part. Um, so that's where the nub will be, which is, which is really nice when they do that. On these parts, you still require some cleanup. You've got that little bit of leftover nub, okay, from the gate or the sprue or the tree or the runner or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then you nip these off with really good nippers. They're still a little proud of the surface. So we're going to want to want to hit them with the glass nanofile right here okay and there there we go they're gone and then just hit the edge just a tiny bit and then right here we've still got a tiniest bit of nub and you can't really it's not really easy to get a sanding stick or sandpaper or the nanofile so just gently scrape across that with your exacto knife or similar hobby knife and this is an exacto brand. These blades are Harbor Freight, though. Don't don't get it twisted. I don't I don't spend money on exacto brand blades. And then the track horn could have a little bit of nub on the bottom, so you might want to just, just ever so gently um, do that. Once you have that all done, okay, you take your uh, your lower link there, and you take your, well, like there, there we go. And then you take the next, sorry, lower, you know, outer piece of the track pit there. Now what you're doing is exactly, okay, and we're gonna show you, exactly here, the middle here, and exactly there. That's the only places you really want glue, period. Okay, and it's gotta be, you know, the good, the hot stuff, the ABS glue. Okay, to me it makes ABS glue also. Um, it is not carried at my local hobby town. And you want like a good amount on this middle middle pad. Okay, get a good amount on there and then get just right there. There's this little notchy thing. You just want to get the glue like right there. Okay. And you have two bottoms together and then you glue one of the, you put on one of these uppers okay and then just wiggle that a little bit while you're pressing down all right and I'm gonna I'm gonna glue on a track horn for you they are uh, they are symmetrical front sorry they're symmetrical front to back so it doesn't really matter and then I've been putting the glue on uh, focus framing Ian uh, I've been cutting putting the glue on the bottom of the horn and then putting in the hole um, just to avoid any potential boo-boos of uh, getting a little too cavalier with the glue. And we'll put another one on here. 
All right. And we will get a nice little dab right there. We'll get a good, healthy few blobs on this flat center section once again. And then a nice, healthy dab right there. Okay, just on those areas. Nowhere else. All right, and then we'll lay down another one of these. And we will we'll articulate the track. Okay, and then we'll take another another guide horn. Oh, come on, this glue bottle's so almost damn near empty. Like, you can't get all of it out of there sometimes. Uh, I'll probably just pour it into the uh, one of the other bottles. Now, if you don't get every little nub mark off the guide horns, I don't think that's a big deal, personally. You're barely going to see them, and you're going to be painting these things. I'm more concerned with functional assembly. And there you go. Uh, pretty quickly, you now have glued together track links. Now, yes, it is very tedious. Um, and I am a glutton for punishment, so I already pre-ordered Andy's new Tiger One early uh, model that's coming out in approximately February, I think. Um, those tracks are thankfully much, much, much quicker to build, much easier to build, uh, as far as I can see. They, they use a standard track pin that goes through to hold them together. They're all slide molded. That's beautiful. Um, I don't think there was, I don't, you know what? I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, but the pins on this are way skinnier than the ones on the Tiger ones. So I don't know if they could have slide molded whole track links. Uh, there were or ones where you just at least just glue on the guide horn and then slide pins in I don't know if they could have done that for this kit if it was uh, technically or financially possible uh, Given the level of detail of these they're pretty nice. Uh, there we go. There's my like proper like adult grown-up YouTube tutorial section there Okay, now do this uh, 75 more times and I'll see you later. Okay. I won't be back for a little while. Well, this, my friends, is uh, what three sprues worth of track links looks like. And uh, you may be saying to yourself, I've made a poor decision. But it's fine. It's fine. Honestly, this kind of work, although mundane and repetitive and boring, um, uh, it could be, it could be uh, thought of as very centering and uh, peaceful and uh, Something. I'm trying to be positive here, everybody. Come on. Pretend I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I really am. Um, let's see here. Oh, Andy, Andy, Andy. I love this kit. These tracks are a bit of work. That's, I, I, I'm not really complaining. I mean, well, I'm complaining. I always complain, right? That's kind of, kind of my lot in life. You know, being, being a born and raised New Yorker is, is, we're, we're, we're raised to be complainers. Um, this city smells. This city's dirty. This pizza is not as good as the other pizza. Um, but yeah, no, I mean they're really nice. I'm I'm wondering. So I'm I'm supposed to be going to Arizona in uh, February for a business trip, and I may try to either fly in a little extra early or fly in a day before. Uh, we were going to make a whole vacation out of it. My wife and me were both going to fly in multiple days early, uh, but I do want to stop at Andy's. And I do want to ask him, like, so, so why didn't you make these one-piece links slide molded that used pins? I just, I, I, I do have to ask. Um, I'm sure it's it's some either engineering or financial aspect that made it unviable to do. I'm, I'm almost dead. I mean, I'm positive it's one of those two reasons. It's either engineering or cost. And this kit came out at $139, which, in my opinion, is a fantastic price for a 16th scale static kit with this much detail. Um, you know, it's a lot of plastic. A lot of plastic. Shipping, container prices, all that stuff came into play. Um, delicate, you know, the engineering would be the pins would be too delicate if they used slide-in pins. Metal pins may have been unviable because, you know, a lot of metal pins. I don't know. Uh, either way, they're they're gonna go together just fine, and we will be back. I will still be alive. I will still have most of my what remaining sanity I have, and they're gonna be fine. And we're gonna get over it and get past it, because then we're gonna start like doing upper hull stuff and fun things and things like that. So, yeah, I'll see you 
See ya. See you at the mental institution. Be right back. Okay, so we're about we're about four or five beers into these tracks. Um, so another little build tip, okay? Um, processes, okay? Processes. When you're nipping them off the sprue, just hold the sprue in one direction. Nip, 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 nip. Well, nip, 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 and then nip, 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 nip. You know, when you do that, and then turn around, and then nip, 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 nip. That makes that go quicker. Secondly, when you're cleaning up the tracks, uh, my process thus far, as you're aware, is nip off these little uh, reverse pinned nubs, whatever the hell they're called again. I, it leaves me. You nip those off, and then you you sand off the remaining nub with your nanofile. Uh, the gun primer racer plus premium bonus, whatever the hell this thing is, uh, the the blocky nice one. This this does the best job. Um, instead of nipping nubs, putting your nippers down, picking up the racer, sanding off the nubs, what I have found is more efficient is I'm just going to nip all the nubs off carefully with the god hands, if you have them. If you can't afford the god hands, I understand they're very, very expensive. Um, these are about half the price for the Dispay. It's not spelled like it sounds. Uh, the displays. Also, if you go to USA Gundam Store, they have their 2.0 nippers. They're they're basically the same price as the display at that point. I haven't tried them yet, but um, the displays are fantastic. Uh, the you know, and, and obviously the gun hands, but they're very delicate. But just just go through and do single processes so you don't put down your tool and switch tools. So make a pile <clears throat> that you've nipped but not sanded. Okay, and then if you need to get the knife to clean off this little center thing here, then do that as a third process, but one process at a time. So this way you're not wasting time switching back and forth between your nippers and your, uh, and your sanding implement, preferably a glass nanofile, and, uh, and your X-Acto blade if need be. Like, do each process singularly, just make a pile, so this is my pile of all the nip. These are already done. These don't really need anything. Uh, those 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 top pads. Um, but yeah, one process at a time makes you more efficient. If you do one thing at a time, like I haven't even cut off the guide horns. The guide horns are going to be a separate process. I'm going to cut them all off at once, and I'm going to sand all the bottoms. Uh, you know, and that's that. And it makes it a little, a little quicker to build these tracks because, like I said, they fit together beautifully. They don't need a ton of work, but just the basic prep here that we're doing with the nipping and the sanding and the nubbing and the, it, it'll just, it'll just go smoother. And I think it's mentally less, less taxing because, uh, you know, a lot of us are in this hobby um, as a release and a relaxation um, from our normal daily grind. Uh, and some people may be really, you know, escaping some major problems doing this hobby. Like, you know, mental health has been uh, been an even more egregious issue the last few years, for obvious reasons. Um, and having a hobby really, really helped a lot of people, including me. I was, uh, I've been into building models for a very long time, and then when, when, uh, when you know... When the the demic hit, uh, yeah, I, I got even heavier into it because it was such a great, relaxing escape from the daily grind. Um, but yeah, making making your hobby easier to do does not hurt. Okay, you're not cheating. Okay, uh, we're all mediocre here uh, for the most part. Some of my viewers are the damn near pro level consignment builders. I mean. And some may just be starting out, and that's why we're here. To uh, help the ones just starting out and entertain the ones that are way, way better than me. And I will almost guarantee you, a good portion of my subscribers are way better modelers than I am. They may simply watch because I'm a lunatic and they enjoy watching me flail about building things. Or I just have things to build that they don't have to build or they haven't built yet and you know yeah it's kind of the thing 
Uh, this Andy's tank, look at that. All of our nipping is done on these track pads. And now we just go in and we will, we will just sand them off, okay, with the racer. This thing works great. Um, make sure you have your toothbrush handy and just just give it a little little brush every now and then. Clear clear the remnants out of the grit. Uh, th this is the best thing since sliced bread as far as sanding off nubs. I, there, there's really oh god, like once I found these things, I will I I've almost not ever touched my manicure shop sanding stick things ever since then. I use those for like heavy duty sanding. Like, but, oh man, these are amazing. They give a glossy finish when you're done. Here, let's just, look at that. You can see the gloss on the plastic. They, they're, they're like 10,000 grit, but they bite through, they, they chew through plastic like 120 grit, but they leave a finish like, you know, thousands of grits. And I live in the South and you know, we're grit professionals down here apparently. Um, you know, grit connoisseurs, um, but yeah, no, this is, this, this, this gun primer racer, uh, USA Gundam Store has their own house branded racer, it's made by gun primer for USA Gundam Store, and instead of the black with the racer, it's like a white overlay with the USA Gundam Store logo, you know, whatever, it's fine, if it's cheaper, buy that one, to be honest, it's the same damn thing, okay, so that's that, single processes, one tool, do all the parts with that tool, then the next step, tool, the next step, tool, so you're never putting down a tool to switch to another tool for a single bit. Get through all of these, then you do the next process. And so on and so forth. And we should, we, we, we don't have a good uh, track record here with uh, not bleeding on this channel. So we'll just put the little safety cap on there. It's there for a reason, for people like me and for infants and toddlers. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so like three hours in, uh, no, no, no crotch shots. Let's just zoom in here a little. There we go. Um, our, our, our next set of tracks is done. Invariably, some glue will spooge out. The schmoo will spread as the schmoo spreads. Schmoo has a mind of its own. And you will get some glue somewhere you don't really want it. You can see where I tried to clean a little up with a paper towel. Um, if that happens and you feel some stickiness happening in the articulation, okay, just keep moving the track link. Just keep it going. Just keep wiggling it. You can blow. Or if you don't feel like blowing, you cannot blow. Blowing is optional but just moving is not optional keep it exercising okay keep it moving sooner or later it will dry out um this stuff dries a little slower than to me extra thin so it may take a minute or two of fedaddling it the more carefuler you are with the brush from this bottle now here's the issue okay the brush from this is quite large compared uh -uh, to a to me extra thin brush a very fine brush so the perfect solution here would be to get the Tamiya ABS glue that would be the perfect solution this is what we have available to us locally and that's what I'm using now an alternate solution would be to uh, save your empty bottle of extra thin just keep it around and pour some of this into a, a receptacle, a small little thing, and use your extra thin brush to apply the ABS glue. And that will be much more precise, um, very much more, uh, you know, laser-guided smart bomb than a uh, Moab, okay? Every, look, if you're watching this channel, you already know what a Moab is, I think. Uh, Mother of All Bombs. Yes. I saw one down in Florida at uh, one of the Fort uh, Air Bases down there that had a little museum. These tracks are really awesome. They're a lot of work. I mean, we put in a solid 1036, 730. We put in a, about, about, about three hours. About three hours per track is, is my skill level. 
Some people may be able to do it faster. You know, I get distracted, I have to pee, I have to grab a fresh beer, I have to puff on an e-cigarette, whatever it is. But, um, there we go. She's all done. Now that the really hard part is over, um, uh, we're not gonna, like, link these together and put in the final track link. Uh, what we may do is put in the final track link with, like, a piece of double-sided tape or something uh, that we can then remove, uh, but at the, yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. We'll put in, so here's what we're gonna do. This would be the plan, would be to put a final track link on with a horn, okay? But we're not gonna glue that, that, track, that track link on there. We're, we're gonna glue, oh, come on. This is the nearly empty bottle. Okay, we'll glue a track horn on, and then what we'll do is we'll cut a thin little piece of uh, maybe maybe this stuff, double-sided tape. This is removable. We'll 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 stick a tiny piece in there, and we'll stick this bit on there. Okay, and we'll paint our tracks. We'll fully paint our tracks, and that way we can kind of pop that off. And then when we get them finally on the suspension, we can then uh, er, we can then do the final gluing of the last link. That'll work. That'll work for me. I think that'll work for you. I think that'll work for most people. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, lovely tracks. Lovely tracks. Obviously not RC durable tracks. If you want to RC this kit. You're going to take a lot of donor parts from a Henglong or a Tamiya or a Taigen or a Hubin or uh, many good suggestions have been put out there as to where to get running gear to RC this sucker. Um, but like I said, the lower chassis tub is pretty stout, so it could probably handle uh, maybe not full tank battling abuse of some of the tank people, but it'll handle a lot. Either way, uh, I guess we'll be back with some more progress because I don't think I have enough footage for a full part two video. And uh, it's only Tuesday. So, yeah, we'll see you when we see you. Well, we'll be right back, obviously. This is all going to be the same video. Eh, whatever. I'm dumber than, dumber than Jay Leno lighting himself on fire from a steam car. Be right back. Well, look at this. We got some progress. Uh, we've got our tracks mounted onto the, onto the uh, suspension here. Um... So, let me just bring this a little better into... There we go. In frame, Ian. In frame. Okay. Um, the tracks, they operate very nicely. I've got one track link taped together with some of this just temporarily. Just so I make sure everything fits. Um, everything fits fine. Uh, this is barely held in with a friction fit. It's fine, though. It's not going to come out. Because you've got the guide horns keeping the track centered. And these are fixed points here. Uh, this fella, uh, I, I don't think it's going to pop off very easily. Either way, we're not going to be rolling this thing around like a Tonka truck, but it does roll. Um, yeah, you know, if I, if I play with it enough, I'm sure that track will pop off um, and just explode on me. But uh, yeah, she moves good. And the sag is nice too. It's got a nice, a nice realistic amount of sag, just a little. Um, you know, the Shermans didn't have a ton of track sag, but yeah, she goes good. And if we pop off this one piece of track, that 3M double-sided tape is just strong enough. Um, so to get these tracks on, you do have to feed them through the upper return rollers, okay? There's no way to just get it, get it out of there, okay? So they do have to, uh, they do have to be slid in. And then uh, the last link glued in situ. What we're going to do with our last link, because we want to get a halfway decent paint finish on them, is we are going to double side tape our last link down right here. All right. And then we're going to paint, paint the tracks from end to end. And then once they're painted, we will pry off our last link uh, from the double sided tape bond that it will have which um, we will show you right now. It's pretty pretty easy to do. We just, come on, there we go. We just got a little, little bit of this 3M double-sided tape 
and we just we just layer in there just layer in there it doesn't have to be a perfect exact thing because uh, it's on the inside and just squeeze it together and uh, we're good to go uh, I may cut out a little bit of this tape overhang in here there we go there we are good okay no excess tape so we'll do that that's how we're gonna paint them and then once they're done being painted we will be able to pretty easily pry this back open and then we can go and lay our glue bead in it's also gonna protect our plastic mating surfaces inside of here from uh, too much paint penetration that will affect the bonding of the glue potentially uh, but again, it, it's not a frickin' Tonka toy we're going to be rolling around. So, um, the, the painting of the tracks, I'm going to do that later. So we're going we're gonna to put these aside, like a TV cooking show. Okay, we're just going to put that aside for now while we prepare the bird stuffing. Um, <clears throat> actually, I've got to prepare the other, uh, the other idler wheels. And uh, we'll be back, hopefully, with some upper hull action coming up very shortly. Uh, so yeah, uh, BRB everybody. Well, not being ones to leave well enough alone, we're going to make our little headlights functional. Ah, very nice. Uh, we got some warm white micro SMD LEDs. Uh, 25 piece wired 0603 LED. Uh, I got red, I've got white, and I've got amber. For this, I'm just going to use the white in the front and the red in the back. They'll be fully lit. Um, probably going to throw a AA battery holder inside here. Something accessible by just lifting the turret off of the model, which I believe we should be able to do when we're done. <clears throat> but I'll double check that and make sure. And uh, just lift the turret off and I'll have a little, little, uh, little, uh, a little, whatever. A little switch inside of there to turn on the lights. Um, Ah, why the hell not? I, I'm, I'm, I'm bored and I have extra LEDs. Let me get my overhead back on here. Yeah, so that's what I've been fiddling with. Uh, you just basically draw a little hole through the back there. And then what we will do is we will drill a corresponding hole in the upper hull immediately behind this mounting hole for the headlamp assembly. And then we'll feed the wire into the tank through that little itty bitty hole. And we should be good to go. There we go. Those are very nice. Be careful with them. Uh, test them thoroughly before you commit. Every now and then you get a bad one. I, I got I got one here. It was a little dodgy. It was a little twitchy. Um, there's actually just some, I believe, some schmoo on the contacts. That's probably causing the problem. Yeah, it looks like just just it was just some leftover schmoo on the contacts. I'm assuming this one will work normally now. Oh yeah, it's fine. It just had some schmutz on the contacts. And we got that, and we got our red ones for the back. And we got our, we can't even see those. Back off with the light, back to shaking the camera. There we go. Little red guys for the tail lights. Uh, doesn't look like the tail lights are uh, carved open for LEDs whatsoever. 40, 42. Oh, they're, oh, yeah, they're nice and unique. So what we will do is we will carve these out, and then we will likely fill them with a tiny bit of uh, clear resin, uh, UV curing clear resin. Uh, fun stuff, great, handy stuff to have around. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. I'm just wasting a ton of time on this. Uh, I think we might, I don't know, what time is it? Uh, it's, a, it's a school night, kids. Um... What's today? Wednesday? Hmm. Gives me a little time to work tomorrow, if I'm allowed to. I won't. I'm noodling here. Okay. Okay, so there's a lot of things. They want you to put in all the clear, the clear bits. Um, they want you to put in the clear periscope glass. I am not sure what I want to do with that. Uh, if I put in the clear periscope glass, I could, I could pre-paint it with some clear blue... And then use some liquid mask or masking tape or something on it. Or I could do my trick with the uh, foil tape that I uh, paint over. Where is that stuff? Done this before. As you can take some of this Tamiya foil tape you get with a lot of RC tanks. 
and you paint over it with uh, clear green or clear blue and it gives you a nice lens effect for your uh, for your clear glass parts if you don't really care so much about having them be actual clear glass looking eh, we'll see we'll see what we do oh look at this there we go it's a Sherman from the future we're gonna we're gonna use the stuff we used on our M1 Abrams that would be that would that would be kinda actually that'd be kinda sick like a semi-modernized uh, package from whatever always packages this time of year we had we had the Amazon truck then we had the FedEx truck then we had an unmarked white Amazon van and then we had the UPS truck oh and then the USPS truck we 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 did the hat trick today other than DHL uh, but I haven't ordered anything from Japan in a little hot minute or uh, England actually there will be a DHL truck coming we do have some some things from the United Kingdom uh, on their way shortly I believe okay uh, back to me drilling holes in the headlights and hopefully not my fingers. And, uh, do, 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 yeah, we'll be right back. We temporarily pause our Jimi Hendrix to show you a working headlight. Nice, right? So we've just got our lens, uh, uh there we go. <laughs> we just had our lens, uh, just dry fitted in there. Um, never use crazy glue near clear lenses. <clears throat> and... Never, never use them to put clear lenses on. Um, crazy glue. Uh, never use it. There's the other one working. Nice. So we got our tiny little holes drilled. We got our wires in there, and then we'll uh, we'll wire these guys up. We're gonna wire everything in parallel because these are three volt LEDs. This is a three volt button cell, like a car remote starter type battery. Um, and we'll just power it with two, uh, let's say, AA lithium batteries. Uh, because I'm going to leave those batteries in the tank for probably a long time and forget about them. And the lithiums tend to not leak uh, versus, like, a standard alkaline. Even a good alkaline, they, they all leak. They, they, just a matter of time, they all leak. Um, so we got these guys in. Uh, so standard glue to put the headlight onto the tank body. But I did add a little tiny dab of CA glue behind there. And... Uh, Apply a little kicker to it, and this is what I, this is, it's weird, but it works great. This is what I use to apply zip kicker, okay? So I get, get a, a liquid spray bottle zip kicker, and then I get these little, uh, they're literally diabetes syringes. You get a big pack of them for not much money on Amazon, and um, you put the zip kicker in here, and then you could very, very precisely drip a couple dots of zip kicker where you need to, instead of carpet bombing it with zip kicker and it gets all over your skin you're spraying your fingers that stuff can't be good for you so this way you don't get any on yourself and you get it just where you need it uh comes in handy there's my little crazy glue tip of the day um so yeah once our, our wiring we'll we'll figure it out you know and then we got the tail lights to do that's going to be even more trouble because of the construction of said tail lights where are those suckers? I don't even know where they are. They're over here somewhere. I think they're back here. Are they here? Yeah, yeah, the taillights. Yeah, the taillights, uh, yeah, it'll be fine. They're gonna work out. Uh, we just have to drill out, like I said, just we have to drill out these lenses for the taillights. And, uh, f yeah, fill them in with some uh, clear resin, uh, UV cure resin, which we will dye with some red resin dye, and then we'll have red resin lenses in our tank. That should be nice. Now, in the real tank, maybe only one taillight lit up red, or I'm not sh I'll have to check photos online. Uh, I'll do my best, but the whole the point of this is, it, this is not for rivet counters. I don't build for the rivet counters. I don't build to match a historical tank that was actually in combat. I build to make a model that I enjoy looking at and that other people enjoy looking at. Now, when they, uh, if I'm showing this off and I have it lit, uh, there'll be the two headlights lit, and then someone will look at the back, and if only one taillight is lit, they'll be like, why is only one taillight lit? What's wrong with that? Is something broken? So I just light both taillights, always. I just always light both taillights, period. Uh, because most of the people that are gazing their eyes upon my model are not IPMS judges. They are common folk. They are normies okay they're not even necessarily modelers all the time 
or if they are modelers, they're casual, mediocre type modelers, such as myself and many of us on here. I've seen some beautiful custom work going on on the uh, Andy's M4A3 E8 uh, Facebook groups and pages and other armor pages and the mediocre modelers. I've you guys are doing some amazing work out there. So many added details, added weld seams. I love it. Keep doing it. You know, keep at it. If you're the type that wants all that and add little pins and chains for every little fuel cap and everything, I love that stuff. I think it's awesome. Keep doing it. I'm not disparaging. I'm just saying this is how I build mine. Um, and also I build for the common man. <laughs> uh, or woman, for that matter. Uh, and just kind of keep it keep it casual and easy and like straightforward not get too crazy uh, Well, the next video we might get too crazy because we're building uh, Potentially a massively huge pain in the butt model It's notorious for being a pain in the ass. Yes, and we're chewing we're biting it off and we're chewing it and it's gonna be grizzly and It's possibly gonna lack flavor for quite a bit of time uh, but with enough gravy and beer and uh, will, we will get through it. Uh, guys, that's it. This is it for tonight. I'm sorry it was just headlights. It took kind of a bit of work to get knocked out. And it is getting late. And I want to upload another video for some people to see. Not a ton of progress. I mean, well, some, yeah. I mean, we got the tracks done. We got all this, you know, this stuff done here. Um, we have our plan for painting tracks and pulling wheels off. We are going to pull these wheels off and paint them individually. Don't think, I want to put rubber black on these tires. I don't want to, you know, I, I'm going to paint them individually. It's a pain in the ass, but it's a nice step to take. Like, I'm not trying to go overboard, but I just want it to look pretty decent. These wheels, we're going to do our best because they're, they're glued on here. Maybe I shouldn't have glued them on. I don't know, but whatever. Um, it is what it is. We'll hand, we'll hand paint a little rubber black on those treads. You're not going to see those too much. Uh, unless you're, again, an IPMS judge that's, you know, tipping the model up and looking for rivets underneath the lower chassis tub. There we go. Love the model. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it goes together well. It's well engineered. It's a little more fiddly than a Tamiya, purely because of the level of detail that this thing, like, if you look at a Tamiya RC, um, Sherman of any form, M51 or M M4, it doesn't have any of this crap here. It's just bare hull. Like, they did nothing, Okay. This is so much nicer. So, I mean, I, I w if you could steal the suspension off of something with HVSS that's an actual RC, eh, we lost the sprocket. Um, I, would, I would probably try to RC this chassis if possible. Uh, it should be strong enough. You just have to, and you'll have to come up with a, uh, yeah, you'll have to come up with an idler uh, setup of some form. But other than that, uh, fairly RCable, I guess, if you care to partake. Uh, okay, well, we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming. We love you. Hit that like button. Comment, 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 and maybe subscribe. We'd appreciate it. We. There's multiple personalities in this head. So, yes, it is a we. No, come on. All right, adios, everybody. Enough talking.